um, hi guys uh, so welcome to the uh, third session of uh, you know uh, the uh, node.js uh, full stack course the demo sessions right uh, so what we'll do is uh, we'll um, take a look today at uh, we have done uh, some front end stuff in the last few classes we have done html css uh, etc we have done right so uh, uh, we will uh, take a look at uh, how to uh, work on some backend stuff today, uh, which uh, would might also be uh, pretty interesting to you guys. Uh, all uh, as well as that, we'll take a look at how to uh, uh, use JavaScript on the uh, front end, which I think uh, to do list and all you had seen in the uh, last class, right? So uh, uh, let's uh, get started i'll just uh, wait for just one more minute if some other participants are uh, you know joining in okay um in this is a different uh, type of session uh, we did a webinar one so i'm doing it using uh, meetings this time and uh, you guys can uh, use the chat here as well and uh, you can raise your hands if you want to speak uh, right and uh, i can unmute somebody if they want to speak as well Yeah. Um, anybody else finding voice not audible? I think you can increase the volume a little bit if you feel such a problem because uh, I just did a playback of mine on myself and it seems uh, it is audible. Uh, cool. Uh, so let's, uh, we'll get started. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll just uh, start sharing my screen and uh, let's get on from there. Okay. Um, is the screen share visible to you guys, uh, all of you? Okay, awesome. So, uh, is, uh, Um, yeah, let's uh, take a look at uh, this. So uh, we need Node.js. Now, if you, if some of you guys don't have it downloaded right now, don't need to download it during the webinar. You can do it after the webinar and uh, try out that uh, stuff. So Node.js is basically, uh, uh, as it says, it's a JavaScript runtime. So uh, uh, just two minutes of theory, of course, around this. Uh, JavaScript is, after all, an uh, interpreted language, which means that it needs a runtime to be able to run on. Uh, you can't compile JavaScript code down into an exe file, which you can double click and run. It does not work that way. You need the interpreter of JavaScript to be able to run the JS files. Now, most browsers, um, all browsers, I would say, come with a JavaScript interpreter inbuilt. So that's why you can run JavaScript code in your, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chrome or Firefox, Internet Explorer, these kind of browsers. Now, if you want to run JavaScript code without the browser, if you want to run JavaScript code directly on your computer, okay, without the browser, right? Uh, for example, you want to copy some files from uh, one uh, folder to another folder and you want to write a program which will do that. And you want to write that program in JavaScript. And you don't want uh, this to be running inside your browser. You want it to be running directly on your computer. So for that, you would need a JavaScript runtime that can run outside the browser and Node.js is basically that, okay? So uh, you can uh, download either the latest version, which is 13, or you can download the long-term support version, which is 12, uh, any version that you want to. Uh, once you have downloaded and installed it, so you know uh, how to download is you can go to the downloads tab and uh, for Windows and Mac, for both of them, you get the installers, uh, which you can download and you can install it via that. 
uh, for uh, Linux, if anybody is using, what you can do is here, uh, down here you will find uh, installing Node.js via package manager. So there is this option like this. So you will click on that and uh, then you will find whatever Linux distribution you have, whether you have for Debian, FreeBSD, uh, all of that, Fedora and all of that. So you can click on this uh, and uh, here uh, there are uh, Node.js binary distributions. You have to click this link. And uh, there's a readme here, how to install for uh, Node.js version 12, how to install for Node.js version 13 and so on. So that's how you can install it for uh, Linux, okay? Um, so uh, once you have Node.js installed, uh, what will happen is that uh, I think terminal is visible to you guys. So if you write uh, node hyphen V here, uh, it will print the version of Node.js that is running on your computer right now. And uh, uh, right now version 12 is what's uh, running on my computer right now. Okay, so uh, What I will do is uh, Just uh, making the third demo class and Okay, so how does uh, Node.js run? You can create a say hello.js uh, file in your computer. You can write uh, console.log uh, hello and uh, usually like inside your, uh, you know, um, inside your browser, you would uh, link this JS file to an HTML file and run it. Uh, via Node.js, what you can do is you can uh, simply in your terminal uh, write this uh, node hello.js, okay? Uh, so you write node and uh, name of the file and uh, that's how you run it and it gets run and whatever is written inside that uh, that gets uh, printed out there. It's uh, pretty much as simple as that. Okay. Um, what we can do with Node.js is that, um, you know, uh, there are uh, a couple of things that uh, happen inside your browser, which you can't do inside Node.js. And there are a couple of things that you can do inside Node.js, which you can't do inside browser. Uh, that aside, uh, it is the same language. Uh, it is JavaScript only. So the syntax is same. The way you create variables, the way you create functions, the way you call them, the way you create classes, objects, all of that stuff is same. Okay. Whether you are running JavaScript on Node.js or whether you are running JavaScript inside a browser. But there are, of course, a couple of things which would be different. So if I do console dot uh, log. Uh, document right and if i try to run this you'll get an error that uh, document is not defined uh, now while inside a browser uh, that does not happen right inside a browser you have got uh, you know uh, if you go to inspect and, uh, the console here so document exists that exists because when you're running in a browser document refers to the html page that is open on your page and window refers to the browser that is open Right. And compared to that here, if I do a console.log window, uh, then also you don't get anything because window and document, these kind of things, uh, you know, they do not exist, uh, you know, in uh, uh, when you're running it on the, on the terminal, because no, this is not right now running on my terminal, on time of terminal, there is no concept of window or the concept of uh, document. But there is some other concepts here. So when you're running uh, Node.js on the, uh, you know, on the terminal, you have access to something called process. Now, what is process? If you just you know run it, you will see process has a lot of things inside it. And uh, like the process contains the version of Node.js, which it is running. Uh, it contains version, versions of uh, all uh, libraries and all that are running, right? Uh, so uh, this is basically a way to... Uh, uh, Hey, uh, anybody wants to speak something? I don't know. Uh, if anybody has like a doubt or something, you can just write it on chat once. If it's something that I uh, cannot explain well on chat, then I, I would like to unmute you. Uh, okay, so. Hello. Uh, yes, I didn't hello. understand. Uh, yes. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I am Avimanyu. Oh, hi, Avimanyu. Yes. Uh, so what did you not understand? 
so please repeat again that time i was doing something uh which part did you not understand and uh, that previous one only previous lecture only previous lecture this yeah now only i have started uh okay uh so uh Mm, oh, let me just resume to what I was uh, basically explaining. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we can actually access uh, the process inside, uh, you know, uh, in mm, uh, when you're running via Node.js. Uh, but this is something like if you try on your browser, if you try to print uh, process, uh, you know, process is not defined. So there is, uh, you can't access the process uh, of the browser via Node.js here. That's because of a security reason, uh, any script that is running on any page, they should not be able to access the, you know, uh, system process of the browser because if they did, then they would uh, be able to, you know, uh, do things uh, which are, you know, uh, you know uh, kind of problematic from a security perspective. They can access the memory of the browser, even the uh, one website, uh, running on one tab can access data of another tab. So access to process is not allowed when you're running JavaScript inside uh, the browser. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay, I guess I'll have to stop the annotations that people are able to do on my screen. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, Uh, in uh, uh, okay, in a good question why Node.js is preferred over other backend languages. So I think Node.js is not uh, uh, preferred over other uh, backend languages. Uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of other uh, backend languages. There is uh, Python. You can you build web uh, websites with Django or uh, with Flask and something, or you can do it with Ruby on Rails. You can even do it with Java, uh, right? Uh, so uh, the thing is, uh, we do have a course on uh, Django as well at Coding Blocks. We have one on Node.js as well. It's uh, it completely comes down to preference. Uh, I think uh, one uh, thing that uh, as a positive thing for Node.js is you're using the same language on backend and frontend. Uh, might be easier. You don't need to you know uh, have grasp over two languages. Uh, okay. Um, but uh, that aside, I think uh, using any language for backend is fine and it's not like Node.js is preferred. Uh, it's just that these days, a lot of people are using Node.js. It's uh, something that's very popular these days and there are a lot of libraries available uh, to uh, you know, uh, implement a lot of different things using Node.js. It uh, probably has the largest number of uh, you know, uh, libraries uh, available, uh, which, which is a good thing. You know? uh, you're not going to write everything from scratch. We'll use some li existing libraries and tools, right? Um, and uh, so good question about large scale projects. I think uh, if I have seen uh, pretty big uh, large scale projects running on Node.js. Uh, okay, uh, you can just Google search, you know, uh, companies using Node.js on their backend and you will see there are a lot of companies uh, working on very uh, big projects uh, running on Node.js and even coding block, all the systems that you use at coding blocks, the hacker blocks, online coding blocks, courses and all of that, all that backend is run, written in Node.js uh, in itself. Uh, coming back to you know what we are discussing. So uh, in Node.js, uh, uh, there is uh, there are a couple of uh, system level libraries which you can use. For example, if you want to you know read write uh, files in Node.js, okay. So there is uh, Node.js FS API. You can search for that. And uh, so this is the Node.js API documentation, uh, right? You can go to Node.js uh, slash API, and uh, it contains uh, all the uh, uh, system level APIs that exist in Node.js. So for example, in C++, uh, what you do is you in include file.h and uh, you do a or a stream to create a file input stream, file output stream. Similarly in Java, you do, you know, uh, Java dot, uh, I think uh, Java dot system dot file. And via that you can create files and folders like that. So in JavaScript, we also have a way to uh, access the file system, which is using the FS API. So, uh, uh, the FS API, uh, the documentation for that, you know, if you go for a file system here, you know, you will find that. And uh, so uh, let's say you want to, you know, uh, write uh, some data into a particular file. Uh, what do we do about that? Okay. Uh, so um, let's say the file system. 
Now to be using the file system API, what we have to do is we need to uh, import the uh, FS library. Now in a uh, language like C++, you do hash include. If you, if for a language like Java, you do, you know, import uh, Java dot plan dot something like that. Here, uh, what you do is uh, here we write uh, const FS equal to require uh, FS. That's how we require the file system library. It's, this is the syntax for importing things in uh, JavaScript. And once you've done that, we can do is, uh, uh, fs dot write file and I can pass uh, the name of uh, a particular file here. Um, so uh, say hello world dot uh, txt and uh, then the second argument I can pass the data that I want to write. Okay. I can uh, write that. Okay. Now uh, there are two functions. There is a write file and a write file sync function. So if I use the write file sync function, uh, okay. Uh, in that case, I just need to pass these two things. Or if I use the normal write file function, it is a asynchronous function, which means that this writing file will happen in the background. Uh, it's a different thread. So it's a threading as a concept. If you don't know, I don't want to confuse you guys with that. When we do the course, we understand properly what asynchronous is, what uh, threading is, what background thread, foreground thread, all of these differences, what they mean. So we do that properly in that case. Uh, I, I'll just use the write file sync function, which we don't generally use while writing production code uh, because uh, it uh, basically, you know, uh, decreases the performance of your system. But for now, if I do write file sync, hello world.txt, and uh, now if I just, you know, run this uh, file, uh, hello world.txt file has been created and there is hello world written inside that. Okay. Um, how about uh, reading stuff from the file? We can do is, uh, you know, uh, fs dot uh, read file sync we can pass the name of the file from which we want to read the stuff okay and uh, we can uh, save it somewhere uh, so you can do like const data equal to fs dot uh, read file sync and we can do uh, console dot log uh, data uh, okay and we'll see what has been read from the file so we see that when we are reading from the file, we get a buffer. We don't actually get the data, but we get a buffer. A buffer is basically a sequence of uh, bytes. And you will see that this is H E L L O and then uh, space and then W O R L D. So this is the buffer. Okay. And uh, these are actually bytes. Uh, it's 65 being actually the letter E in this case. Uh, okay. Uh, but we don't want a buffer. We want to actually show that string. What we can do is simply uh, print data dot two string. Okay. So if we do data dot two string instead of printing data directly, uh, we will see that uh, you know uh, this time, hello world gets uh, printed out here. Okay. So uh, that's uh, how you can you know uh, do say file operations in uh, JavaScript like that. Uh, so coming on to like, how do we create uh, web servers using Node.js? Because that's the point of, you know, uh, using uh, Node.js, of course, is that we want to be able to create uh, a web servers and all in Node.js. So uh, to use web servers, you basically use some kind of framework. So uh, in Node.js, the most commonly used framework that we use for uh, building web servers is uh, something called Express.js. Okay. So uh, Express, uh, Uh, I think expressjs.org is the website, expressjs.com. Okay. So uh, if you go to, if you go to express, you'll see that, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's a fast, unopinionated, minimalistic web framework. That's what the description is. And uh, we can go to get started part and let's see how to get started with uh, this, of course. Right. Uh, so uh, we have to uh, install uh, Express uh, and there is a command given npm install Express. So why npm install? We just want to cover that. And then how to create a basic, uh, you know, uh, Express app, a web server, which can be accessed over anything. We'll see that. So what we'll do is I'll create a separate folder for this thing uh, instead of writing in the Node.js basics part. Right. Uh, So uh, yeah, 
Um, the uh, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll create a new folder for uh... now. Uh, what we're doing earlier was we were just creating randomly some scripts and we are uh, importing some Node.js system level APIs and we are running that and we can do it anywhere. But when we start building a server, what happens is now we are actually going to create a Node.js proper project. And when we start building a project, we should do is uh, we should uh, run this command, uh, you know, npm init. Uh, so npm stands for uh, Node Package Manager. And what is Node Package Manager is it's a way to, you know, uh, of course, manage packages in Node. And what is a package? A package is basically a folder containing a lot of files which together run and uh, they they can be a lot of things they can be a you know data collection server it could be you know uh, a package for you know uh, maybe modifying some files uh, so there are a lot of things that you can uh, do with that and uh, uh, if you write some package which is very useful you can actually publish that as well and other people can use your package as well and there is a website uh, called npmjs.com uh, which is the uh, official website for npm and uh, you can see that you know uh, what is npm uh, is uh, you know some of the uh, i'll show you uh, Yeah, so what are some of the most popular NPM packages? So React, as you know, is a web framework that a lot of people use. React is an NPM package, uh, okay. Uh, and uh, Commander is a library to create command line programs using uh, Node.js and uh, Chalk is a, a NPM package by which you can print colored strings into your terminal. And similarly, Express is also one of the most popular, uh, you know, uh, Node.js packages. And when we create our own server, we will also create our own package and we can write npm init and this creates a package for us. And we write npm init, it'll ask us a couple of questions. It will ask me what is the name of my uh, package and I can uh, say uh, node server example. This is the name of the package that I want. I can give it a version. Most of these you can just press enter, enter, enter and uh, you know, it will create a package.json file uh, for you. Now this package.json file is a way to identify your package. Most importantly, why we want to create a package is so that we can define what other packages my package depends upon. Because when you create big websites, uh, like say you create a you know user authentication server or you create a blog engine, you won't be writing the entire code like from ground up. Each and everything you won't be writing yourself. You might be using a database library to connect to MySQL. You might be using a library which uh, you know uh, for validating whether a string is an email ID or not. Like that small small tools you will be using. So uh, that for that we do that. Now uh, what we'll do here is uh, we will uh, run this command npm install express. And when we run that uh, command npm install express, so you will see a couple of things happen. First of all, in your package.json file, a dependency called express has been added, which means that uh, this uh, package that I'm working on, it will depend on the express package uh, to work. And that's why the express package has been installed uh, up here. Okay. Um, then uh, what else uh, would have happened is uh, that uh, there would be a folder uh, which would have been created called node modules and this node modules will contain a lot of packages that it has installed. One of them would be express of course, uh, express itself would have been in, uh, installed, uh, here is express, okay, here. Uh, but the thing is that if you look at the package.json inside express folder, okay, you will see that Express also has its own dependencies. So Express as a library also depends on other libraries and uh, these libraries are also installed in my uh, node modules. So uh, uh, the, the, the reason why we do it like this is uh, tomorrow if you have to share your code with somebody, you don't have to share the node modules folder with anybody. You can just share the package.json and they can run npm install and all their dependencies will just get installed in their place. So how to create a server? Let's create a server.js file. And uh, just like we had imported fs. Now fs is basically a system library. It exists on your computer when node.js is installed by default. But express is a third party library. Somebody else has made it and they have published it to npm. So uh, after you have done npm install express, then only you can start using express and you can write like this. 
uh, const uh, express equal to uh, require uh, express and uh, we do is we call express as a function and we create an app so this is our server app this is not a, a mobile app or a web app this is a server app and we do it like this const app equal to express and uh, this app uh, can uh, be started using this function app dot listen and we can start it on any particular port so uh, what you will do is you will use a port which is greater than 1024 okay 0 to 1024 is reserved for system usage and if you try to run a server on port 1024 you either need to be root or administrative user and you will need to grant some firewall rights and all uh, which is not needed what you do is you simply run it on a bigger server let's say we run it on app.listen3333 on this port okay now what happens is that right now i'm not running this program okay if i visit uh, this particular url localhost uh, colon 3333 uh, so what this means is that i'm trying to access the server called localhost uh, and what is the localhost server my own laptop is my localhost server okay and uh, 3333 is the uh, port okay so if i try to access it i will get this error here which says uh, unable to connect so Firefox uh, can't establish a connected uh, connection to server at local three 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 because we don't have anything running on uh, three 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 three. Now, uh, what does a port really mean? Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, just like you have your USB port and audio port, etc., on your laptop and your computer. So uh, ports, uh, these are virtual ports. These are network ports, and ports act in the same way. Uh, if you have a port and the port has a particular driver connected to it and it's part of your computer then you can connect something to the port and it can talk to your computer via the port so you can you know uh, run a usb device by connecting it to the usb port and they will talk to your computer via the usb port okay now in one port at one time you can connect only one device and similarly here also we can run only one server at one port at a time the number of ports uh, technically are uh, you know theoretically unlimited but practically because of you know uh, constraints of uh, the memory uh, size and the address of the port uh, we can only have up to 65336 ports in most operating systems so you can run your computer uh, you can run your uh, server on any port uh, between 1024 to 65336 you can run between 0 to 1024 as well but we will see that when we see how to you know launch our website to production now, uh, if I actually find out, uh, like when you visit google.com, right, if I ping google.com, right, uh, so uh, this is the URL, this is the uh, IP address of google.com and google.com will be running on port number 80 uh, by HTTP and uh, if I go there, so that's basically google.com, okay. Uh, similarly, if I want to access google.com over HTTPS, uh, so that would be basically here. Four forty three is Google's SSL port. Okay, so uh, that also is again uh, Google.com. Okay, so every uh, server that's running that's running on some of the other port for HTTP by default the port is uh, eighty. For HTTPS by default the port is four forty three. Uh, but we can run it on different ports as well. Now we are running on 3333. Now, as soon as I uh, run this, okay, uh, in my uh, computer, if I just uh, click on the run button, uh, what you will see is that uh, if I now visit the same website, localhost, uh, you know, uh, 3333, instead of getting that error that cannot connect etc we are getting uh, actually the you know we are getting a response to it if we inspect it and if you see the network tab uh, if you refresh you will see that uh, there has been a response that has come okay and uh, the, the the response the contents of the response is this cannot get slash this is the response it's still an error but your server has responded with something uh, when your server is not running you can actually stop uh, the server from running and if i refresh this code again so it's a very different thing this request did not get a response okay there was no response to this request and this request did get a response the response was a 404 there is nothing available on that page but uh, there was a response so uh, if you run a server now what if i actually want to send a proper nice looking response what i can do is i can say app dot uh, get uh, slash and I write like using this uh, syntax, uh, which I will just explain to you in a short while. You can do rest dot send. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, this, if I now run, refresh the page. Now it says hello there. And now the response that I get is a 200 response. Okay. When I send this request to slash, I get a 200 response. And this is the response hello there. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and, and hello there gets printed on my screen. I will just explain to you what the syntax is. App.get is a function to create a handler for a get request. So uh, when, when we write a code like this, it means if somebody sends a get request to my app on this particular path, this particular path is the slash path. And the slash path means when somebody has not written anything after this. So if I write a uh, slash a, then the path is, you know, slash a. If I write, you know, uh, question mark, uh, slash, uh, you know, uh, ABC question mark, something, something. So then this is basically my URL. But if I have not written anything, uh, sorry, if I have not written anything, it means the path is this slash path. The slash path is the uh, outermost path or the root path, as you can say, it is the base of every uh, website. So if I send a request to a different path, actually, if I send a request to, you know, uh, slash A, I will still now get this error cannot get slash a because we did not create a handler for get request for the slash a uh, root, but we do have a handler for the slash root and we get this uh, printed here. Uh, this function that I have created here. Uh, okay. Uh, so you can either define it like this uh, function uh, like that you can define or uh, there is another syntax of writing function, which is you just write the variables in and in the brackets and you write like this. So uh, in this function, the arguments, the first object is the request and the second object is the response. So we can see here, we can write, you know, uh, console dot uh, log, um, you know, um, rec dot uh, URL. Okay. So uh, this will tell me the URL of the request. Okay, so if I run it again, let's say, uh, sorry, I'll just uh, stop the code running and I will run it again. So with my code running, if I send this request again, now that console.log that I had written, that is in my Node.js file, right? It's in my server.js. So that will not get printed here. This is not front end code, that's back end code. So back end code stuff will get printed here only. And this is the URL of the uh, request out there. If I want to print the entire request that also maybe you can do other things as well. Rec dot host is also there and then uh, rec dot uh, URL is there. And then there is rec dot uh, protocol is there. Uh, okay. So if you print all three of these things, uh, let's run that. And now if I send a request again, so you will see that uh, protocol is HTTP. Uh, localhost is the host and uh, slash is the url so my request has gone to http localhost and uh, you know uh, host name I, I should write i think that's what the message says and uh, we can also get a red dot uh, port i think is not available uh, so these things we can uh, print here and we can send res dot send hello world and the response that we have sent here it's a you know a textual response but if I, instead of this, I write, you know, uh, h1 and write hello world like this. So this is like HTML. It's of course not a complete HTML uh, page or something, but it has h1 tags like this. If I send that instead and I just start the server, check that out. See, it runs, uh, it shows it as h1, right? And if you right click and view the source of the page, you will see that the source contains H1, hello world, like this. And that's what my browser has uh, printed on the screen. Okay. So uh, you can actually send HTML in response here. Also, uh, if you want to you know, uh, send uh, a, a complete HTML proper file, that also you can do. You can do is let's say we create a folder here called files and uh, I have a, hello world.html file here and I create a proper HTML file with uh, say h1 like this okay so I can do is also instead of writing this dot send and send a string like this here we can call this function res dot send file and uh, path of my file is uh, 
files slash hello world.html okay so you can send a complete file also in response uh, back uh, to the uh, server okay so uh, if i run uh, this instead now okay uh, what happens if i refresh okay okay uh, so the path must be absolute so it says there is an error that happens uh, the path must be absolute or specify root so how to create an absolute uh, path is that in my node.js uh, uh, you know uh, script um, we can do is let's I'll show you something uh, we can run node like this as well we can just type node and this opens the node console just like the browser has a console node also has a console we can run this and we are now in the node console and here we can type node just commands and see we can write do let a equal to one and then you know uh, a plus uh, 10 like that so it's just like the browser console we also have a node console now in node there is this thing called dir name okay uh, oh, sorry dir name does not run here it will run inside a script only actually uh, so let me do is just comment that out for a second console.log So if I print dir name here, what happens is that it prints the, uh, you know, uh, folder in which I'm running my code. So uh, what I will need to do here, in fact, is that I will have to res.send file, I will have to do dir name plus slash files like this. Okay. So if I write like this instead, dir name plus files, it give, gives the full path of the file properly. So then uh, we can just, you know, uh, run it again. And uh, this time around, let's refresh the page. And yeah, so if I look at view uh, page source here, it's the complete uh, page that we had just created that entire response is uh, sent uh, to my, you know, uh, browser. Okay. And as long as the server running, you can visit the same website from multiple tabs. You can, uh, you know, visit uh, this, website uh, from you know uh, a different browser and everywhere it will just work of course the same right now here's something interesting let's say i create a variable uh, using let rather let page views equal to zero and every time a request comes I do is, uh, you know, uh, page view plus plus I do. Okay. What I do here is that uh, in uh, instead of sending this file, I can do or let this file be there and uh, let there be another uh, thing app dot get slash views so if somebody goes to slash views what i will do is i will send page views like this number of views equal to page views okay so this page views is a variable that is created outside both these handlers okay it's a global variable and every time a get request comes i do a page view plus plus uh, when somebody views the home page and uh, when uh, you know app dot get views happens then uh, number of views plus uh, page views i uh, do like this here okay so uh, let's see how uh, this is going to run So I go here, uh, sorry, page views, there is a little mistake here, it should be with S. Okay, so uh, I see uh, this page here, hello world one, and then if I go to, you know, slash views, tells me number of views equal to one. Uh, if I go to this page and I, you know, uh, refresh this page a couple of times, and then I see this, so number of views is uh, now it is five. Okay. 
So uh, now if I, the thing is this number, it's not on the client side. It's not on uh, the browser side. This number is saved on the server side, which means if I visit this page from, uh, you know, uh, Chrome, a different browser that was Firefox, that number is still the same. If I visit the page here one more time, this number will change. This number will not change automatically on the front end. You'll have to refresh it because from the client to the server, a request goes and uh, you know, uh, then only uh, I'll come back here like this. So, uh, uh, if I uh, restart my server, now that's the interesting part. If I stop my server, okay, stop code run here. And if I restart my server, when I restart my server, if I go to this page again, the number would be zero because uh, the variable uh, page views is actually uh, on my, uh, you know, uh, it's on my uh, server. It's not on my client. So the number gets updated when you refresh and make a new request uh, to your server. Uh, and the, uh, the, the number of, uh, you know, views, uh, the number changes only when you restart the server, not the client. So it's not on the client. So I think we, we worked with that to-do list uh, in the earlier example, right? So uh, we can actually uh, try out making our, uh, you know, own uh, to-do list uh, using server as well. So if you make a server side to-do list, what will happen is that, uh, let's just take a look at the earlier code that we uh, did in the last class. Uh, So we have this to-do list stuff which we did, right? And if I have this to-do list and I add some items, right? Now, if I open the same file somewhere else, it is going to be starting from fresh. And uh, you know, the tasks that I add here, they will not you know replicate here because uh, all of these changes, the tasks that are getting added and removed and uh, Uh, hello, uh, am I uh, still uh, audible? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, give me a second. Okay. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. So let me just uh, continue with uh, what I was saying. Um, yeah. So let's try and build a, you know, to-do list where the to-dos will be saved on the server and uh, not on the uh, client. Okay. So how do we go about uh, doing uh, the same? Okay. Um, Uh, Ayush, yeah, about the recording of the lecture, uh, yes, most of our uh, demo classes, we would be putting up the recordings on uh, YouTube uh, by next few days, okay. Uh, so, let's say I create a to-do list.js, uh, this is a server and I will run it on a different port, okay. So, const express equal to require express like we had done. Okay, uh, const app equal to express uh, via which we create the app, right? We will make this app listen on a different port, let's say 4444, okay? What we'll do, let uh, to do is equal to, let's make an array which will have first task and we'll have second task like this. We will do uh, app.get and if somebody sends a request to slash, we will have rec and res okay and here is the interesting part okay so i will do is let html 
equal to and i'm going to make a string now i'm going to make a string using back ticks now why i'm using back ticks is because when you create using back ticks then you can write your string in multiple lines very easily so now what i will do is i will create actually an html page like this and then i will have a body inside it like this and then i uh, would have of course an input element i will have a button which says add i will have an unordered list and inside this unordered list i want uh, you know these uh, list of elements here so how do we create these list of elements and how can we insert them here so let's do this thing what we'll do is uh, let uh, of to do is equal to an empty string and for let i equal to zero i less than two rows dot length uh, i plus plus we do is list of to do's plus equal to li uh, plus uh, sorry li plus uh, this uh, to do's i plus this okay so inside this HTML here, basically I want to insert these uh, list of to do because this list of to do would become what? It will become uh, something like this. It will become a string with li uh, something something and then uh, li something something like that. This will be my list of strings. This is exactly what I want to put here, right? So if you're using a string with back ticks, then uh, you can use this uh, very awesome syntax that you can write dollar bracket and you can name a variable what happens is that the data of this variable gets injected into the string it's called escape uh, literals uh, okay literal escape uh, syntax we can say we can take any variable put it into it using this uh, literal escaping like that and uh, this html is what we will send to the uh, response we'll do res dot send this is the html that will send so basically uh, i am preparing the html that i want to send on the server on the fly every time the request comes i'm preparing the html and i'm sending it like this uh, how does this look like when i run my server so let's run this file uh, okay and uh, let's see uh, what we see on our uh, you know uh, page if i go to slash 4444 Awesome, that's what we wanted. There's an input box, there's an add button, and there's first task and second task, right? How do I send uh, a request to the server when I type something? So if I type something here and I want to click on the add button, now, of course, JavaScript code, I don't want to run on the front end. What I want to do is I want to send a request back to the server, and the server will again send me a new set of uh, to-dos. So to do that, what we'll do is we use something called forms in HTML. So instead of this, I will create a form. And inside that, I will write the input and the button. Now this button, I will create type equal to submit. So if I give the type equal to submit to a button, then that form actually submits the form. This form, I will give it an action. I will give it an action equal to add. Okay. And this input, I will give it a name. Pretty interesting, right? So I have, I created a form. I give the form an action called add. I give the input a name called task and I turn the button type to submit. Okay. When I do that, if I refresh this page, if you go to the inspector and you will see that this is a form inside this form, there is an input and uh, there is a button. Okay. A, a very interesting thing happens. If I look at my network tab, if I type something here and I click on add, A request goes to this place. A request goes to slash add, and uh, in front of it, question mark task equal to like that. So here is the request that goes slash localhost four 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 slash add question mark task equal to this this this, which is the stuff that I typed there. So what does this add? This is whatever was the action of your form. Your request goes to that place. Whatever was the name of the input that becomes the key and the value of the input is whatever was the value inside it so this automatically happens if you create a form in your html page now and we can handle this kind of a request where we will do is we will create another app.get
we'll create another app dot get okay slash add okay and uh, what will happen here is that uh, console dot uh, log if you do this value rec dot query and uh, what i will do is i will send the user back to this page only how can i send a user back there i can do rest dot redirect to slash if i do response dot redirect the user gets redirected back to this page only okay but i am printing this query now you will see some interesting thing that comes inside the query i'll just stop the code run it again and this time so let's see i type something i click on add this request went there and as a response of that request we got a 302 code a 302 means a redirect and when you get a 302 the browser automatically gets redirected back to whatever was the redirection path and our browser comes back to this path and we get here on our server side you would see that reg dot query when it is printed you see reg dot query contains an object inside that object there is task and inside the value of task we find whatever was getting added so what we need to do here is we need to append this value into to do's and then this to do's will automatically be printed on my page so what i need to do is to do's dot push to do's dot push is a way to add things so in javascript the arrays they behave like uh, both linkless and stacks so you can queue and dequeue things into a array you can also push and pop things into an array okay so we can do to do's dot push and we can pass rec dot query dot task into it okay and after that i will uh, redirect okay so let's take a look so uh, there's a question here saurabh singh has asked uh, how much time will it take to completely uh, cover uh, you know uh, html and css in the classroom good question i'll just come back to that question uh, let me just complete uh, this uh, little request and uh, response pair just a second here so now i'll stop the code run it again and see what happens now so now if i write something here click on add now in your browser you might notice you might not notice that you know the new item that is getting added it feels like you know just in the page it gets added you know uh, it feels like just like the older code that is written on front end, but you go to the inspector and you look at the, you know, inspector here. If you type something here, see what happens. I don't know if you will notice or not. I, I don't know how much fast the web browser is, but uh, the so video stream is, are you able to notice that this data, get, this, uh, inspector becomes empty, you know, in an order list, we were seeing you know, yellow flashes uh, that were coming there, you know, uh, the order in which you are adding things. Here, what you will see is the entire inspector becomes empty and then it gets reloaded. Are you, are you able to see that, uh, guys? Yeah, so th that's what. So here what's happening is if you're gonna go to the network tab again and I will just show you what happens when I type something here, a lot of things are happening. Request goes to add path. That redirects me to the slash path. The slash path contains the entire new response again. Okay, so uh, what is happening is not one new bullet point is not getting added. We are making a request. The server is recalculating the HTML all over again and it is sending back to me. The interesting thing with this is uh, you can open it in a different tab as well. And here also you will get the same to-do list because it's the to-do list is on the server. It's not on the client. You can open it in an incognito window as well. And there also you will get the same to-do list because again, it's on the server. And the most important thing is that if you go to uh, say about config in uh, firefox and uh, you can uh, javascript dot enable true this i can turn it to false this disables javascript on my browser on the front end it disables javascript if you disable javascript a lot of websites will work in a very different way you see you go to google.com you start typing something there is no autocomplete because autocomplete happens via client side javascript now, if I search something, you will see the response page is very different. It's very different from the uh, Google search page that happens when you have JavaScript. Uh, if you go to account.google.com, uh, uh, account 
I think accounts.google.com. You know, uh, oh, I will just uh, go to it using, uh, sorry, I'll just uh, do it on incognito window. You can actually not uh, log in uh, if I uh, try to log in here uh, using say my email ID, uh, you know, uh, and uh, I mean, uh, many websites you'll see login will also not properly work if there is no JavaScript on the front end. I think in Google it does work. Um, and uh, uh, there will be a lot of websites which work uh, pretty differently. You can go to Facebook, you can go to Twitter, uh, and uh, you will see that the, the websites behave pretty differently when JavaScript is not enabled because there is no JavaScript running on the front end. And uh, even on coding blocks, also a lot of websites like I think online.codingblocks.com, it does not completely work if JavaScript is disabled. So you don't disable it permanently. JavaScript disabling, you don't, uh, this is just for debugging, you know, just for seeing what happens when JavaScript is disabled. This is on Firefox. If you want to do it on uh, Chrome, I think on Chrome, there is a way to do it uh, here. Uh, if you go to inspect and uh, inside uh, this thing, there would be some settings. Inside settings, there should be disable JavaScript here. So you can disable JavaScript here. And if you disable JavaScript, what happens is uh, our page will still continue to work. There's no issue. Because it does not depend on JavaScript on the front end to work. It, it, it's autom it is running uh, using JavaScript on the back end, right? And uh, if you restart the server though, if I stop my server, uh, sorry, uh, if, so, if I stop my server and if I restart it, uh, now if I refresh this page, you're back to the original list because the server is not saving it in a file or in a database or something. It is in the memory of my server. Uh, it is in this variable, right? This variable is in the memory of my server. And if I if you restart the server, then the list, of course, resets itself. But all that stuff is happening on the back end rather than instead of the front end. Uh, so I'll just uh, push this code uh, as well uh, to your GitHub repository. And uh, um, just a second. So what I'm doing is I'm just removing node modules from uh, the source code because that's not needed. Uh, if you download it, you can do npm install yourself on Express and run it as well, uh, right? Uh, so yeah. So I just uh, pushed uh, that stuff uh, to uh, your uh, GitHub repository on which all the code for the demo classes are. Uh, I think uh, if anybody does not uh, have it, uh, I'll just uh, share it once again um, with you guys on chat. So now I'll just answer the questions one by one. Uh, I'll just pick up sort of while coming to a question. I will come to Ayush's question first. First, if I want, don't want to refresh the whole page and just the list is the question from Ayush. So Ayush, what we do in that case is that uh, we create an API. An API is a different thing. API sends a response in form of JSON, and uh, we we make we have to use uh, JavaScript on the front end for that. Uh, we we will save the to do list on the back end. We will not save it on front end. We will save it on back end. We will make a AJAX call and AJAX call is basically a, a, a request which can run while your page is open. Okay. It's a request on the background. So we make a request on the background, a call goes uh, and uh, it fetches the list of new stuff that has been added and it brings it to your page and only appends those items. So that's exactly what we do cover in our uh, course right after we learn how to build servers. Okay. So just after we learn how to build servers, we learn exactly this that because this is not a good option because every time refreshing the page, you might need to build something like this. If JavaScript on the front end 
implementing that is not possible or because of security reasons you don't want to run javascript on the front end there are a lot of websites like banking and all websites they don't run javascript on the front end for security reasons so uh, or or you know you are running it on very uh, you know poor internet connection people or people with very uh, bad uh, browsers and laptops where websites if they have front end javascript running it becomes very slow so stuff like that where you can use this kind of a thing um, where you create server rendered uh, pages but uh, in general yes uh, we we will see how to uh, you know uh, save stuff on the back uh, back end itself but still uh, append only the newly added stuff on the front end okay um so uh, uh, coming to sorab's question uh, about uh, the classes so i think if you go to uh, the live classes page of our website you know now all of our pages they have a this thing description page so if you look at i think the full stack web dev page it has a uh, view description uh, page and there uh, the uh, list of lectures are uh, there okay so if we have two lectures on html uh, each of them would be like around two 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 hours kind of two and two 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 and a half hours kind of uh, lectures uh, there are three on css so five of five we will have five lectures in which we will do html and css uh, in a very well uh, in depth way and then we will start with js basics from the lecture 6 and then we will have uh, bomb and dom operations like create uh, uh, like on click event and all which we just uh, saw you know sample of that in the last uh, demo lecture and then uh, we cover javascript as a language in depth in lecture 8 to 11 and after that we do node js intro so what we are doing in today's demo class we uh, do it in our live classes around uh, lecture 12 we can maybe do it in a little earlier by lecture 11 or 10 if uh, we can cover those things uh, faster there but uh, generally that's uh, the rate at which we'll do this uh, nitish has asked uh, what is the use of react so react is basically a front end framework so you know uh, it is something uh, once you work on a lot of front end websites first you will start understanding uh, the need of a front end framework because we do a lot of things over and over again on front end and uh, you know uh, being able to divide uh, what we are working on in our front end page especially if your website is very very big then dividing things in form of components so you can reuse a particular component of a page in multiple pages so that's when frameworks like react vue js angular ember these kind of frameworks are helpful they are uh, you know uh, comparable to each other react vue angular ember js they are all used for building front end websites and they they divide our page into components and uh, it, it's just easier to make more interactive websites uh, when you make a lot of websites without a framework first using plain javascript uh, you will understand like at what level of complexity uh, you need to switch to using a framework instead of that uh frameworks make the page loading slow uh bhavya bhagya has asked and um, yes so technically speaking any javascript uh, library that you add to your page each and every one that you keep adding you add jquery it will make it a little slower you add react it will make it even slower like that so uh, it does not mean that frameworks as such are slow uh, right and uh, maybe without using a framework also your page could contain so much css so many images it can still be slow so it's not a general thing that frameworks make things slow but yeah if you use a uh, like when you want to uh, have really, really good performance or you want to make your page available to people on uh, you know poorer networks or on uh, poorer devices uh, which don't render fast people prefer to use server side loading instead of frameworks on the front end because frameworks do need the device to have a good network connection and uh, good performance for frameworks to be able to run on front end Uh, these are about front end frameworks no the term framework is a very general thing even back end express is also a framework it's a back end framework it's not a front end framework it's used to create servers okay uh, nishta has asked uh, can we use a zamp for locally hosting our uh, website uh, and uh, you can but why would you need that because zamp is for php and uh, we are using node js so uh, if you are doing node js you don't need zamp if you're writing or writing code using php then you would need zamp to host it okay um um okay uh, is there a scholarship test for this course good question so cb.lk/test keep this link in your mind always cb.lk/test whenever you go to this page you will find out the next scholarship test that's happening and in fact there is a test on 3rd of april 
can register for that uh, for a scholarship test uh, for uh, you know uh, applicable to courses on uh, you know uh, web development uh, django machine learning android all of these courses it is uh, any scholarship you win there it's going to be available uh, applicable to live as well as online as well as classroom programs okay uh, sort of classroom program mera uh, start ho raha hai uh, 6th june se start uh, hone ka plan tha uh we don't know a lockdown wagera kab tak rahega and whether uh, it will be allowed to run classroom programs by 6 june kafi time hai 6 june aane mein to hopefully sab kuch theek ho jayega to then yes we will start from 6 june uh, otherwise uh, we will have another batch of live classes from 6 june if we are not able to run classroom programs because uh, we don't know how long the corona virus situation is going to continue theek hai uh will writing tests be covered prakhar has asked and uh, there is i think a class on testing in your syllabus it is written right lecture 24 is unit testing coverage mauka chahiye uh thoda yaar matlab thode se mehnat kar liya karo scroll karne ka to fayda ho jata hai kabhi kabhi life mein hai na uh so uh, what projects are going to be covered uh, so we will be uh, creating a note taking application uh, or a task manager uh, in the front end section then we will work on uh, medium clone uh, which is a, a blogging site uh, then we will do a shopping cart example uh, where people can put uh, items on their cart and check out of course without actual payments wo sab nahi cover hunga but we can basic stuff in a shopping cart kind of a thing and we'll create a chatting app where uh, you know you can create a chat room and people can chat with each other uh, we'll do a few more real time projects as well like a real time music player where everybody who is connected can play music on each other's computer uh, like that okay um i think uh, that's it any other questions anybody has Uh, for this entire course, uh, we can uh, do the entire course using VS Code in itself, Visual Studio Code, or Atom by GitHub. Both are very good text editors. Or there is WebStorm. Uh, it's a ID by JetBrains. So WebStorm is a paid ID, but those of you who are students, you can get a student license from uh, JetBrains. Uh, for teaching, I personally use Visual Studio Code. So you can use any of these three IDs for uh, writing code in this uh, course. Okay. how many hours this course is uh, that's a very bad question i believe uh, you know uh, you can go and multiply uh, 25 into 2 probably 50 hours uh, here uh, but uh, if we are able to you know uh, cover things faster during the classes all classes might not be 2 hours some might be 1 and a half hours some might be 3 hours right uh, we will not cross 3 hours in any of the lectures because we will have to schedule them and you might have something else or i might have something else after words scheduled after the class so we will not cross 3 hours but uh, the point is we might have more than 25 lectures as well we might have less than 25 lectures as well and uh, i i run classroom programs uh, for uh, more than 4 years now and uh, i teach this node js batch in a classroom program it takes me Uh, there are batches where i have completed the entire syllabus including projects including a hackathon in 18 lectures and there are batches where uh, the courses run for 26 lectures as well so the point is that to all guys become a good web developers and uh, not count the number of hours you are uh, studying uh, you learn all the topics and you are able to make your projects that's more important okay um so uh, prakhar you are asking about the uh, creating something like google docs so uh, creating something like google docs i think we will cover sockets and we will cover uh, you know a lot of things that are needed to do google docs at the end of the course i wouldn't say you know uh, you would uh, be equipped with exactly the all the knowledge that is needed to start making google docs right on the day the course ends but you are definitely going to be at a place where you will know what other things that you need to cover up uh, to do that okay so uh, that's the entire purpose of this course uh, like i have been working on web and android development for 7 8 years and uh, the 
uh, I can't uh, teach everything that I have learned in all of these years uh, in a you know 25 30 uh, session course and nobody can and I think uh, you cannot run uh, cannot learn everything about web development in uh, two months which is very true about anything about web development about machine learning about Android anything right uh, but I think uh, what uh, does uh, you know uh, what should a course be like it's my personal belief is a course should be is that you get to a level where uh, in web development at least learning new things in web development you don't need to you know uh, ask somebody or you know uh, feel lost about in web development anymore after doing this course at the end of this course you would have sufficient knowledge to be able to you know quickly google stuff and uh, pick up and like we want to do google uh, docs kind of a thing how to uh, do you know conflict resolution on a real time document what are the required thing prerequisites for that uh, you would have uh, those things you know uh, in your mind by the end of this course uh, you know uh, and you would also probably know some libraries that would be useful to implement uh, certain things like that so that's the level i want all of you guys to reach that after this course you would be become well self sufficient in able to learn new things in Node.js, uh, in web development and implement them. Uh, so about uh, the timings, uh, Prakhar, uh, you know, uh, when we start the lectures uh, from uh, sixth, uh, you know, we'll just see how everybody who has enrolled into the course and uh, if uh, everybody majority of the people prefer a different timing, we can reschedule that. That's not a problem. Uh, but of course, like if 4 p.m. is good with say 49 people in the course and just one person does not want it in a 50 uh, person I probably that won't be possible to accommodate that right uh, so I've talked about the projects already Mohit uh, just a while back So, okay, uh, I think I'll just uh, end the session here. Uh, I'll try to get all of your sessions, one, two, three, all of them on YouTube as soon as possible. Okay, uh, thank you guys for attending. Uh, if you have any other queries, just reach out to support at codingblogs.com or you can reach to me personally at arnav at codingblogs.com. Okay, uh, thank you so much for attending.